In this video, I'd like to look at radio buttons. And then from this set of radio buttons, I would like to extract two pieces of information. In this case, I would like to know how many scoops of ice cream they chose, one, two, or three, but then also a uh, price. So I'm getting two pieces of information, the number of scoops and the price out of the same radio button. Okay, and this code is located here at this location. Uh, I have a CSS and an HTML, so they're zipped up. Okay, and those are underscores, radio underscore two, underscore pieces, underscore of, underscore data, capital R, capital T, capital P, small o, capital B. All right. Um, okay, so let's see it. So I just have three versions. I have what I call the sibling approach, the split approach, and the index approach. So I'm going to choose uh, two scoops here, and I chose two scoops, and I know the price is three fifty. Uh, one scoop is two fifty, but the point here is I have the three pieces of information, and here I know it's three scoops and four fifty. So the multiple pieces of information. And so I have some style, not much. The thing that's very radial buttony is down here, I'm styling inputs of the radio type that happen to be checked, and then their sibling is the label. So that's that is that uh, changing the style of the selected radio button. Okay. All right, so then here is the first set of radio buttons, and I have a radio button um, and with an ID of rad1. The name is rad scoops, so that's what uh, groups them together into a set of radio buttons or the type radio and the value I have. So I'm getting two pieces of information, and one thing I get out of radio buttons is their value. So that was that's where I put the price. And then I have a label associated with the radio button. And that's where I'm going to get the sort of words for the number of scoops. And these, uh, this input and this uh, label are bind, are, uh, are connected by this ID of the input matching this four of the label. So that helps say behind the scenes with some screen reader, but it also helps, um, it's not, that's not the browser I'm using, this browser. This also helps in that I can click on the label and have the same function as if I click on the radio button. Um, and that's done by this ID and four, but what I'm actually going to be relying on in this case is that the label immediately follows uh, as the input. And so then it is the, the next sibling. And that's what the styling of it was uh, relying on, that the label immediately followed the check radio button. So that's, I'm going to be relying that on that in code as well as in style. So here is the order function for that first set of radio buttons. I'm doing a very sort of old fashioned uh, looping through the radio buttons. So I'm getting document get elements by a name rad scoop so that's the set of them so that is an array I'm looping over the array starting at the index zero going up to and not including length going up by ones I'm asking if the ith the radio button is checked and then if it is I'm grabbing its value which we knew to be the price and then I am grabbing the ith radio buttons next siblings inner HTML and that was one scoop, two scoops, three scoops. So that was the words. So that was my sibling. And then I knew the scoops and the price. So I just put them onto the page. Okay. So that was my, uh, what I called the sibling approach that I relied on the label being the sibling of the radio button. And I could access the sibling in code. Um, the next version, I'm relying on a split. So again, I have the radio button and the label, but this time I've made both pieces of data that I'm interested in 
I place them in the value with some delimiter. So my value of the first radio button is one scoop vertical bar 250 and two for the second one, two scoops, 350, three scoops, 450. So I'm putting, making the value two pieces of information. And again, here in order two, this is called by the second button. I, again, doing a pretty old fashioned loop through the array of radio buttons, get elements by name, rad scoops two. So that's the set, the second set of radio buttons. I'm looping over that array. I'm asking if that checkbox is checked, then I'm grabbing its value. And then that value has both pieces of information with that vertical bar delimiter. And so then I uh, took that data and split it on that delimiter and got tokens. And now I know that they're going to be two tokens, tokens zero and tokens one. And token zero was the number of scoops and tokens one was the price. Okay, so that was a, that was another way of getting the two pieces of information out of the one. And in the third one, I'm going to rely on an index. So I'm going to have some parallel arrays. Parallel arrays have the same index. And so now I've switched my value this time to value zero, value one, value two. So my values are the going to serve as the index of my parallel array. And then here is said parallel array. So the words, a parallel array of the words, one scoop, two scoops, three scoops. And the second uh, array in the set of parallel arrays is the prices 250, 350, 450. And here is my third a uh, function called by the third button. And again, one more time, the old fashioned uh, loop over the set, the third set in this case of radio buttons, ask which one is checked, grab its value, which in this case is an index. And then when I want to display things on the page, if I want the words, I say scoops with that index. And if I want the price, I say prices with that index. Okay. That's what I wanted to show you. Sometimes you have, uh, you want multiple pieces of data coming out of uh, just one set of, in this case, radio buttons, a set of elements, but sort of one group of elements, and you want them to give you uh, different pieces of information. So in version one, I relied on the fact, put one piece of information in the radio button itself and the other in its sibling, the label. Uh, in version two, I put both pieces of information as the value of the radio button, but I put a delimiter between them and used split to get rid of that delimiter. And in the third version, my the value I had in the radio button was the index. That index worked then with this uh, parallel arrays. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you for your attention.